Hello friends, in this video we are going to make this trail effect in Blender 4.0 because of its new node. Now let me go to the viewport and delete everything. First let me make a simple animated cube and set the size to 1 meter. I want to give its animation in geometry nodes. So I'm going to use transform geometry and I want it to move in this direction. So I type hash sign frame divided by 7. And also let me bring up the timeline. And I also need to rotate this cube so type hash frame divided by 7 like this okay this will be my input from this point I'm going to make my trail effect first let me convert this to points mesh to points node and yeah Now in here I need to capture these points at each frame. I mean for having the trail effect I need to capture these points at each frame and somehow join them together. And then we want to have control over the data among the frames. We can think about the simulation node. So bringing the simulation zone. And now let me play it. Nothing happens, because this simulation is getting the points from here, at frame 1, and nothing is happening in here, so it goes back at the next frame and nothing happens again, and it comes back at the next frame and nothing happens, so I will have this aesthetic points in here. So for catching the points at each frame to have something like this, I need to join these moving points at each frame to the previous points. I mean, the points in the previous frame. So I can say join. And now let me check. That's it. I have my trailing effect. That's pretty simple, just like this. By the way, in the previous tutorials, I talked about the simulation in depth and details. I'll put a link in the description, and if you like, you can check them. And in the next step, I'm going to connect these points with lines. So, there is a new node in here, Blender 4.0, which is points to curves. This node. By default, it is doing something like this. It's connecting all the points together. It's acting like this. For example, if these are my points with the index of 1, 2, 3, 4, it will connect them like this by default. So this is what we have as the result. And I don't want that. There is another option for this node. It can also connect groups of points together. If I have some points like this, I want to make two groups of these points and connect these points of the group to each other. For this I should give all of these points, a group of points, actually a similar ID, like all of them should have the ID of 1. Also these points should have the ID of, for example, 2. They should only have similar IDs. This node is actually connecting the points with similar IDs. Pretty simple. So in here, for example, I have three points with the ID of 1, 2, 3 at the first frame. And at the next frame, they will come to here and they will be added to the previous points. So I don't want them to have the ID of uh, 4, 5, 6. I also want their ID to be like this, 1, 2, 3, to be able to connect these points to each other. Right? 
So at each frame, before joining the new points to the previous points in here, I should set their ID by their index number. And after having that, I can bring in the ID in here. And after connecting this ID to this node, it will connect the points with the similar IDs. Now let me play it from beginning. Yes. You can see I have my trail effect. And also if you want to trim the end of these curves, like in here, if you want these points to fade at the end at a certain amount of time, we should define age attributes for them. So I can say capture attribute and set it to integer because I want to define age by the past frames. And before connecting this to here, I should add this by one because I want the age to grow during each frame by one. Now that I have my age, I can say when the age is greater than. This is a compare node, which gives me the control for selecting points. So in here, I said when the A input is greater than my specified value like 20 the result will be true it means in here the points with the age greater than 20 will be selected to be deleted i'm using delete geometry in here and give it to the selection now let me check it yes they are being deleted but 20 is a constant number and i want some random numbers for having more pleasant effect so i use random number random value and set it to integer like between 30 and 50. check it again yes i can Convert it to line like this. Right? Beautiful. Now, after that, I'm going to convert this line to mesh. So, to mesh, curve to mesh node. Um, I need also a curve circle. filling the caps you can see although the radius in here is one meter but this is so small that's because of this uh, mesh to points node the radius in here is 0 0.05 and for having the real number in here i'm going to change the radius curve set curve radius and set it to one now i have my real number in here i can set it to like 0 0.02 and the resolution is too much six is enough i think at the end of this spline, i need the radius to be about zero actually the both ends of this curve so i'm going to use the spline parameters it has a factor well each curve has a factor of zero to one and by this i can have control over my spline and play with it. So I want to connect this factor to the color ramp and connect this to the radius. Now you can see when the factor is one, the radius is one. And when the factor is zero, the radius is zero. Also want to do this for the both ends, so Something like this. Nice. 
and at last of course you can set the material for it And yeah, that's our trail effect. You can, in here, connect any kind of uh, animated objects to this input. So in the next part, I'm going to import my character. And like this, I want to select some points manually on this mesh to have the track of them. Okay, in here, here is my character. And I want to hide the cube first. And I want to select some points on this character. I'm going to select the mesh and add a vertex group in here and call it trail. After that, I should go to the edit mode and select some points, which I already selected some of them. Okay, after having them selected and also this trail is selected, I should press assign to make my trail vertex group. And here is the animation of it. Okay, I'm going to unhide the cube in here. And in this cube, uh, I should bring in the character mesh. Instead of using this cube object, I want to use the cube as, in, as my trail object. So I can bring the mesh, the character mesh in here, set it to relative and connect this to this input. But if I just simply connect this to input, it will convert this node will convert all of the all of the mesh to the points like this. And let me turn off the armature. Let me reduce the size of it. You see, it is just showing all of the points. But I only want my selected point group, the trail. So I can say name attribute. And in this name attribute, I should type my vertex group name, trail. And since a vertex group is a selection of the point, I should connect this attribute to the selection. Now here they are, the points, the selected points. Let's go to the animation and also turn this off again. Okay, I, I don't want this fading effect in here. I want to mute this node and again. Okay, these curves are a little bit thick. I want to reduce this to like 0 0.0025. Okay, so thin now. But first, let me show you something. You can see that they are not so smooth and look a little bit jagged. That's because of the low frame rate. I should, before converting these curves to mesh, I should change the spline type to NURBS. So I use set spline type node and change this to NURBS. Now you can see they are so much rounded and beautiful. In the shader editor, uh, for having this effect, I gave it um, the geometry nodes, the tangent, in the emission, I gave it the tangent to the color of the emission and set the strength to something like 10, okay? And also for having a better control over the radius, you can say group input and simply connect this radius to the input and you can have control over this in here, 0 0.0025, right? Beautiful, it's like this. Also, for having this uh, hazy effect, you can just simply turn on the motion blur. And I rendered this with cycles. And please keep in your mind that when you want to render your animated object, you should make sure that you are caching your animation, especially when you have motion blur, at least to one frame more than your render frame. 
to make sure have a nice motion blur. And yeah, I think that's it. And that was pretty easy. The main part of this trailing effect was these view nodes and also this one. I hope you enjoyed the video and wish you all peace.